Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Our club has a monthly club challenge, and the club challenge this month is a dinner plate. Now, my interpretation of a dinner plate was something that I could, if I wanted to, use for dinner, of all things. So, to me, a dinner plate is something that has a very smooth surface, with very few places that any food could get caught. Now, when I started this, I thought I had a piece of uh, red oak, and because uh, it was rough sawn. And as I turned it down, I realized that this is actually poplar, which actually helps it to be a dinner plate, because it is very dense, close-grained wood, and has very few pores. So, this is my dinner plate. One of the things that I worked hard on this one is to make sure that I had the bottom just as flat as possible. Oftentimes there's a divot in the middle, or oftentimes there's a divot on the outside and a hump in the middle. No innies or outies on this one. This is flat. Let's make this dinner plate. Often, when one side of my wood is flat, I will simply press it against my chuck jaws with tailstock pressure while I rough round and cut my mounting tenon. However, in this case, I'm going to use a mortise mount for an expansion hold. This means that I cannot use pressure from the tailstock while cutting the mortise. That is right where the tailstock would be. So in this case, I'm using a handy threaded wood faceplate. Some double stick tape will hold the wood for the short period of time while I cut the mortise. The rest of the time, I'll keep the tailstock in place. After lightly centering the wood with the point of the live center, I'm placing a rubber stopper over the center so I don't overdrive the point too far into the wood. Then round off the wood with my large bowl gouge. Now for the mortise. I'm measuring the outside of my chuck jaws and transferring that measure to my wood by holding the dividers against the wood. Actually, I'm only holding one leg, the left leg, against the wood. The right leg is held away from the wood. I'm looking to where the mark from the left point aligns with the right leg. Never do I want the right leg to touch. Then I could get dividers in my face. I'll mark the scratch with pencil for clarity, but I'd rather move, remove more wood from the bottom before I cut the mortise. With much of that done, I can cut the mortise. I'm trying for only about one-eighth or less in depth. Recently at club meetings, I've seen items with three-eighths or deeper mortises in the bottom. That's way too much and leaves way too much wood and height. I think they're afraid of blowing out the mortise with expansion pressure. But how about making a very small foot with more wood as it passes the bottom of the mortise? This wood will support the pressure and make the bowl much more appealing. My bottom line is that a quarter inch mortise in an item is way too much. It's too obvious how it was mounted and way too heavy. I'll power sand this plate with only a little hand sanding touch up. After sanding, I could apply finish to the bottom, but I won't this time. I'm not going to go do any decoration to the upper surface, so I can finish the entire plate once it is finished. Now that the bottom is finished, I can reverse the mount using that shallow mortise in the bottom. But rather than relying on a huge mortise to hold the plate to the lathe, I'll continue with the live center pressure as long as I can. I plan to do all my heavy cuts while the live center is in place. Between the live center pressure and the cutting pressure going back towards the headstock, that wood will not go anywhere but round and round. It's time to move back to the tailstock, but now that a lot of the wood has been removed, I can and should take much lighter cuts. It's time now to pay close attention to the wall thickness and making smooth cuts. It does not hurt to measure with figure eight calipers a time or two. Then finish off with a heavy bowl scraper. Then power sand the top side up through all the grits. Almost finished, so it's time to sign the bottom. The only problem is that I started with red oak lumber, but this now looks like poplar. It's hard to make that correction with a pyrography pen. Since this is a utility plate, I'm finishing with walnut oil. 
I don't want a surface film. Walnut oil is edible if it has to be. Plus, I can retreat the wood with more walnut oil later if I want to. If I want an initial sheen, I would buff it with carnauba wax. This plate is not for fancy decoration and poplar is not known for rich grain patterns. Still, this is a good utility plate. By now, you should recognize that I don't like deep mortises in the bottom of bowls and plates. That is novice work. Make them shallow. I guess I have to be ready for hate mail now with that comment. This plate was easy and quick to make. It will be my spinning platform for the Columbus egg. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are simply not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.